Hello everyone, it's Elise from The Painter Brush & Co. Purico have just launched their brand new texture finish. So I thought I would do a little video of the very first time that I'm using this product. And then as I go, I'll do some more tutorials for you too. But I thought this would be a fun way to show the product. So it's a powder that you mix with your paint to get a texture. And it can also be used to create ray stenciling, which I'll do another video on. Um, so it says, and as, as always, the instructions are on the jar. And if you order from me as well, I will do up an instruction sheet for you in addition to this. So it pretty much just says to mix it with Pure Eco's chalk finish, so which is a chalk paint, or with the basin blocker, um, mixing approximately one to one. Okay, um, similar to a thick batter, apply generously with a brush or spatula in a stippling motion to create the peaks. Once drying has begun, gently knock down the peaks if desired by running a damp brush over the surface and allow to dry overnight. Uh, it can be painted over once it's dry. It can also be used um, as a filler. So if you've got some damage on a piece of furniture, you can mix this with some paint and you can use it as a filler and you can also sand it. So let's have a go. Pure Eco, brand new product, have very kindly sent me a little um, tester pot to try. I've got the good old Macca's cup and a whisk. And I've got, this is just an Altenico brush, but any brush would do. So I've just got this brush today. I've also got this terracotta pot and I've painted it with a base of, I believe this is Capri from memory. I painted it quite a while ago, but this is Pure Eco's Capri. It is a chalk paint on the base and I'm going to do a white over the top. So we'll see how we go. Um, now I'm just using, just for reference, I'm using up old paint that I've had hanging around for a while and I'm just trying to get through old stock. Essential Botanics is the, uh, is, is the paint brand that I used to stock. Uh, they closed down at the beginning of 2020. Pure Eco brought their formulations. So Pure Eco's chalk finish is the exact same formulation as the Lessential Botanics chalk paint. Exactly the same formulation. So what I'm doing here can still be carried across to um, the Pure Eco range. I also stocked the Autenico. Um, I decided to do it just with the Lessential today only because I don't have any of the chalk finish open and I don't want to open a jar right now. So I'm just going to use up some old paint that I've got. It's a, it's called creamed white, so it's an off-white, which I think will be really, really pretty over this as well. So let me get this jar open and then let's have a little play. Okay, so I've got it open, so let's pour some paint out first. I don't know how much is in this, so we'll find out. There we go. I don't, it's not a huge pot. It's not, just for comparison, there's the jar next to the pot. So it's not a massive pot, but it's still a good size. So we do want a bit of paint, but I don't mind not covering all of the blue either. Right, we're gonna start with that and we'll see how we go. So I've got about five to 10 mil, maybe about five. So not much paint. This paint's quite thick. Um, it is old er paint. It's about three years old, maybe four years old. All right, so this is the texture uh, finish, the powder. Now, it's super, super fine. It is recommended to wear a mask and make sure you've got eye protection as well. So, ooh. Okay, so it feels like corn flour. You know that? Flour feels like one thing, but corn flour's got like that slightly different, um, that slightly different finish texture again. Or even custard powder sort of got that, it's not a gritty texture, but it's different to regular flour. It's got a nice texture. It doesn't smell. So let's just pop, so about one one. So we'll just, I've just got a whisk. And I'm just sort of gonna very carefully, oops, pop it everywhere. I'm gonna go about one one. So let's do a little bit more. Let's start with that. So that's our paint and our texture on top. So let's just give that a little 
stir. Okay. All right. So I think that might have been way too much, actually, because you can see how thick and gritty that is. I know it's starting to relax. This probably isn't the best um, cup to pour it without putting paint absolutely everywhere, of course, too, because <laughs> that's most likely what I'm going to do today. <laughs> I'll just get a bit more in there, that's better. I'm just gonna sit that upside down so it keeps draining out. Okay, so a little bit more paint in there. So I think we're a bit closer to sort of that one one now. Oh yeah, much better. So it's sort of thick, but it's not. And I think with this, you could really play around with it too. There we go. So it's a little bit grainy, but it's not too bad. I think you could definitely add it slowly and mix it slowly and you get rid of any sort of graininess as well. But I think that's a good thickness. Let's try applying a little bit and we'll see. And if we find it's not enough, I can um, we can apply more of the texture finish to it. So here's our pot. <clears throat> I was gonna do all different colors on this. That's why we've got white on there at the moment. But actually, I might sort of just do this bottom half of it. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to pick some up on my brush. So you can see it there. It's quite thick. All right, so a stippling motion. Mm, I like it. I like it. I like the texture that I'm getting. Oh, I really like that bit of texture. I'm interested to see whether or not having it a little bit looser, if it loses some of that texture as it dries. I like how far it's going. All right, so let's add a little tiny bit more powder. I'm just gonna use my finger. I should have grabbed a spoon. Okay, so I've just got a tiny bit more in there. Let's make it a little bit thicker and see. I think with products like this, you've really just gotta keep experimenting with it. I can show you how to use it. I can show you the effects that you can get, but it, ooh, ooh, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> Um, with finishes like this, it's really, you just need to play around with it and sort of work out what you like and what you don't like. And I think that goes for any decorative finishing and it definitely goes for paint as well. All right, so now we're really thick, but let's see what it's like when it's super thick as well. Although it might even be a bit too thick. I'm just going to get some of that off the whisk. Oops. I don't know, this is fun. I love texture and I love, I'm always adding texture to pieces. So this is right up my alley. Okay, so there's that first bit where it was a little bit looser. And then we'll keep applying. Oh, look at that. Look at that difference already. It's very different. See how this is really standing up in peaks, whereas this sort of has softened down. So it is very different when you make it thicker, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Oh, look at that. Now, most people don't like brush strokes, but I don't mind them sometimes. And I think this could be applied with a spatula um, or with a palette knife as well. And I think you could definitely do sort of a bit of this and a bit of this and really, really, really play around with it. So we're just gonna keep going all the way around. And I think looking at it now, having it that little bit thicker definitely gives you more texture. And that's really what I'm after for this. So I'm just gonna go back over this bit here just a little bit and let's just add a bit more in there and I think if you're doing a stippling definitely keep turning your brush as well that way 
Um, it's not all going to look exactly the same. All right, so I'm really, really starting to like that now that it's sort of settling down. Ooh. So you can definitely build a lot of texture with this, which I like. I like how it's thick in the paint. So this is with the chalk paint. So we're just gonna keep doing this. And so I'm really happy with that. I really, really, really like that. But while we're here, let's have a go. So it's quite thick. Let's see if this thickness is suitable to fill. Where was it? I saw it. This, this is only shallow, but let's see. If we wipe it onto that. Let's pop some on it like that. I'm gonna use my finger to sort of push it in just because I don't have a spatula or anything. Cause it can be used as a filler as well. And I love that. I'm, I'm always after a nice natural filler. Um, I've previously had quite a bad allergic reaction to a paint filler or to a to a timber filler before so I think it's important that we do have nice safe ones there we go so I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and sand it back so we'll let it dry and I'll show you what it looks like in a couple of hours once it's sort of started to dry and I like, actually I really like that. Just a little bit. I like the stippling that you get with your fingers. I always enjoy it. It looks very different to a brush. I think it always looks quite cool. Oops, I just touched that. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's let it dry. Okay, so it's been drying overnight and I'm really, really happy with it. I also did after I'd stopped filming yesterday, I used the leftovers to create a little sample board for here in the shop. So this side, it's just stippled. Obviously where you can pick up more, you're going to get a lot more texture like here, but where there was a lot less on the brush, you get this really subtle texture as well, which I quite like as well. And I like the contrast with it all. It gives it a little bit more interest. On this side, I brushed it on. I left it for about 10 minutes just to start to dry and then I was hoping it would be able to do this. I took a palette knife and very lightly skimmed over the surface of it and I kept going so you build these layers which I absolutely love. I love this technique. I've used it quite a lot in the past with an, with an Authentico product so I'm really really happy that the Pure Eco Texture Finish can do this as well. The only thing I did note is that there was some lumps in it and when they got knocked with the um, palette knife they did really really scratch it and pull away from it as well um, so i think if i was specifically going to do this i would apply the texture finish really really slowly and mix it really well after each addition to the paint just to make sure that the lumps etc are all um, mixed through correctly so you don't end up with them. So that's that. So the pot I'm really, really happy with. This is really, really hard. It's, it, the peaks are coming away easily. Oh, kind of, kind of not. The higher ones definitely are crumbling away, but it's, it's really hard. It's not gonna scratch off which I'm very, very impressed with. So it's, it's dried like paint, but it definitely feels harder than typical paint when it's dry. So I'm quite happy with it. I really like the texture that I've been able to achieve. Here it's a little bit smoother, but then over here we've got heaps of peaks as well. So it's fully sandable. So I've just got a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and we filled this little piece in here. So I'm interested to see how that has gone filled. You can sort of see the outlines a little bit, but I'm hoping once we sand it, we're not gonna see that. So as always, make sure you're wearing a mask if you are sanding, just because you are creating a fine powder. But I'm keen to see how it sands. It's nice. It feels like a normal filler to sand. 
it's sanding smooth very, very easily. I was worried that maybe this paper would be too fine, but that's sanding beautifully. As you can see, it does create quite a bit of dust. And I'll touch up, I'm gonna to touch up this blue a little bit after, after I've done this. I'm gonna sort of dry brush some colors over this. Actually, I might even show you that, just to break up that white a little bit. So I like how that's sanding. It feels really, really nice. It is sanding exactly how I expected it to. And I'm glad that you can see how gunky up, gunked up that has already gotten. So it really does sand well. I was hoping that this would work super well as a filler and I'm very impressed. And I can see how it would work really well as a raised stencil as well. So I'm so excited. I really haven't done raised stencils for quite some time because I do prefer to use a, a, a paste rather than just your um, timber fillers and et cetera that a lot, a lot of people use just because I find those can be quite nasty and I've had reactions to those in the past. So I'm really excited that this is an eco-friendly option. So that's so smooth and nice. It feels absolutely beautiful. Okay, <laughs> new piece. <laughs> Obviously a rougher sandpaper would take this back a lot faster. Look at that. Look how well that has filled. There's not a single dent in there. Oh, dust. <laughs> There's not a single dent in there at all. It has filled so incredibly well. I'm very, very impressed. Very impressed, actually. That's beautiful. That has done such a good job. It's smooth. It's gotten in all of it. There's no cracks. I really, really, really like that for filling. Really like that. So I'll paint over that now. You'll never know that was there. So let's have a look at the rest of it. So I think what we might do is just lightly sand over some of these peaks, just a tiny, tiny little bit, just because we don't want any sharp peaks there. All right, so let's just go really, really, really lightly. Beautiful. It sands incredibly well. Incredibly well. I'm very, very impressed with how well it does sand. I'm not wanting to remove all this texture. I just want to get rid of those really high peaks just because some of them, like this one here and these ones, they're quite sharp. And obviously, I don't want anybody to hurt themselves if they touch this. So let's just remove those few little bits. Look at that, beautiful. That feels so nice. I'm really impressed, very, very impressed with this. I'm so excited to use this more. Look at that, beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna clean up the dust and then we'll do a little bit of dry brushing as well. So I, so I can show you dry brushing and I can show you the different technique you can get. So, um, Oops, there's a piece there as well. I must have got that on there yesterday. So to clean, I would just use a cloth that's lightly damp. I wouldn't go too damp. I'd worry that too damp. A, you're going to start removing your blue paint. And I, at the end of the day, this has still got paint. So it's paint and a texture finish. If you go too heavy with water, I think you would definitely affect this and you'd affect the integrity of it. So let me clean up. And then let's do a quick little paint. Okay, quick little dry brush. I am using Pure Eco Silk Finish in the color Sunset. This is just my little sample pot. I'm silk or chalk, it doesn't matter which one you use. Silk's just what I've already got open. So it's what I'm going to use. 
Dry brushing uses a really, really tiny amount of paint. So you're really not going to need much at all, but it's this really beautiful pink, which I think goes so well with this blue. So brush, it is, you can use a dry brush or you can use one that's ever so slightly damp. This is the one that we used yesterday. So it's still a little bit wet from when I washed it, but a slightly wet brush I find is fine. All you're gonna do, tiniest, tiniest bit of paint on your brush. And then you're going to take paper towel, bit of cardboard, whatever you want. And you're gonna brush most of that off. And then, see that? How cool is that? So that paint that's on your bristles is gonna hit all those high points. And you can, of course, go in heavier. You can go in with different colors. You can go in any direction you like. I'm just gonna do a little bit more bright paint. And you could even do this before you sand too, and then sand back, and you're going to have more of that white as well. So there's so many ways that you could do this. Look how beautiful that is. That's just stunning. So I'll come in after I'm done with my blue, and I'll touch up these bits that I have sanded. And I've just got a few bits as well that I've missed. So I will get all of those too. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I might even come in with a stronger pink just around the base, actually. Pink or red? No, I think we're gonna come in with, what am I gonna come in with? You know what, let's do a red. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going all out, we're going red. This is cranberry and this one's in the chalk finish. Again, it doesn't matter what you use for dry brushing. Use whatever you've got available to you. You can use any paint that you want. Um, this paint dried out, that's why there's a lot of water in there. Um, it was on its way to drying out completely. So I just added a big bunch of water to it just to <laughs> wake it back up again so that it wasn't all wasted. Oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful, this red? So this is cranberry. So again, we want most of it off our brush and I'm just gonna go back and forth. Oh, wow. I love it when pieces just come together so beautifully. I like doing different. It might not be everyone's cup of tea. But this is really beautiful and it's a good way to show the product as well, which I love. Beautiful, look at that. So I could keep blending this up too. I could add another color in here as well. So you can sort of do a blend or a very soft fade with dry brushing as well. So you can really see there how it's catching all those little raised bits. And this is when you really just bring that texture to life. How fun is this? Uh, so I'm gonna leave it there. There's really not much else to show you. Um, remembering that you will, you'll need to seal it with something, um, particularly if you are doing a pot like I am. So I'll either use a wax, you could use a spray on top coat like a matte. Um, I wouldn't go for a gloss necessarily unless you're wanting to like add a bit more sheen, but I think a matte would look very nice. Otherwise, Pure Eco's matte sealer. 
and just very lightly brush it on and like over these bits brush it on like normal but over this just so you don't end up with big lumps of it I'd go very very easy with it and just lightly brush it in there we go all done beautiful thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial i hope that you give the texture finish a go it is so much fun i'm absolutely in love with it and i know you guys will be as well thank you for joining me have a absolute wonderful day bye everyone